what the prophet is saying to this woman. Prepare and go, you and your household, and stay temporarily wherever you can. Now, this movement and this shift is not permanent. It's temporary. Hallelujah. There's going to be things that will happen to you, but they are not permanent. They are painful, but they are not. Uh, how many people sense like we are about to reach an expiry date? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I don't know. I don't know what, who, who am I talking to. But you have been, you have been moved from your, from your thing. But it is temporary. And the prophet said, just go outside. But you are not going to stay there forever. God will never allow pain without giving it duration. Uh, somebody lift up your right hand and say, my pain has an expiry date. Yeah. I want you to, to be intentional about this confession. Now, now, let us read. They say, stay there temporarily wherever. For the Lord has called for a famine. Huh? And moreover, it will come on the land and continue for seven years. Somebody say, for seven years. Now, two things are happening here. The Lord, not the devil, has commanded famine. But God never announced famine. He also announced how long it's going to take. He said it's going to be for seven years. Do you agree with me that God has given it time? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Raise up your hand and say, Lord has given them my famine time. Yeah, he said it's going to be there, but it's going to be seven years. Now, don't just enter into that famine think it's your permanent state. Enter that with the knowledge and the understanding that God has already announced the end of it at the beginning of it, which means I'm entering famine already knowing that it's only for seven. <sighs> Is there somebody who feels like it's like I'm approaching my seventh year? <sighs> say it's not gonna be forever oh, hear this oh god i feel this thing here so the woman verse number two set out and did everything in accordance with the word of the man of god she and her household went and stayed temporarily as foreigners in the land of the Philistines. Somebody say for seven years. Which means this woman was not focusing on famine. She was looking at time. Every time it's one year, she was saying six years to go. And after two years, she said five years to go. And after two years, she said three, four years and three years. And I'm here to announce to you, the closer you get, the more frustrated you get. Am I having people who believe that the countdown, the countdown has begun? Do you agree with me that the countdown has begun? Don't look at your pain. Look at the clock. <laughs> Heaven has set time. Somebody say only for seven years. Ah, ah. Now let us go. Let us go. Verse number three. Ay, ay, ay. Can we read that all of us? At the end. Ay, man. Now I get excited. Can oh, this seven years has finally come to end. Ah, do you agree with me that the seven years of famine has come to an end? Yeah, come on, raise up your right hand and say it's over. It's over. The seven years of frustration, the seven years of pain. Somebody shout, It's over. It's over. It's over. I want people who are radical. I want people who are radical. Ah, when the seven years is over.
at the end now you know the man we are listening to now in your car he said you must not just know the promise you must study the patterns this woman she never even allow the long period of pain to make her lose track of time she still remember that this thing is for seven years Imagine seven years out of your land, seven years out of your prosperity, but you are still counting. If it's somebody will even forget what the prophet has said seven years ago. But this woman remembered that this problem has been given an expiry date. But now it's your responsibility to recognize I when your seven years is over because if you cannot read that time you can still be outside when the seven years and that is why the sons of Issachar they knew how to check and study the times and the seasons somebody say Lord help me not to miss my moment yeah come on come on somebody lift up your hand and say Lord I because of the longevity of the pain I don't want to miss my moment ah! the seven years will come to an end for seven years they took her out out of everything he built she built it said go and so sojourn in a foreign land go somewhere away from your staff but listen to this scripture because I want to show you how God operates and we're gonna pray we in verse number three. At the end of the seven years, the woman returned. How many people say, I'm about to return? <laughs> From the land of the Philistines. And she went to appeal to the king of Israel for her house and for her land. Can, can I see somebody say, I want it back? <laughs> Uh, whatever that the enemy has taken me out of for seven years, I'm going to the key. I'm going to appeal for what is. I'm on somebody. I'm on somebody. The woman came back. When you have a set back, don't step back for God is preparing a come back I'm a I'm coming back can I see radical people who say I'm coming back after my setback I'm coming back and my comeback will be greater than my setback Oh, I want you to check what is happening here. It's very divine. At the end of the seven years, the woman returned from the land of the Philistine and she went to, the, to appeal to the king of Israel for her house and for her land. Now, verse 4. Now, the king, now, listen to this. It's very prophetic. The king was talking with who? With Gehaz, the servant of the man of God, saying, tell me all the great things that Elisha has done. I want to see how God works. The only powerful miracle that Elisha has performed is when he was raising the son of this woman. Ah. Now, God is provoking a topic that will include this woman. As she was approaching, some of the things, they will never happen when you are staying. God will do them as you are approaching. Now, which means you cannot wait for it. You must go for it. This woman, restoration never came to fetch her. She, she had to rise up. She had to recognize when the seven years is over. Because some of us, you are still staying in the foreign land and you are not aware that the clock has ticked. Now, God is provoking a topic. As she approaches. Uh -huh. I, you, you, you follow me. I know you hear me. Now let us see how God operates. Now let us read. Now, and just as Gehaz, can, can, you, can you take a 
deep breath and as you read verse 5 because I want to show you something divine. As, and just as Gehaz was telling the king how Elisha has restored the dead to life, behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life appealed to the king for her house and her land. And Gehaz said, my lord, O king, this is the woman and her son whom Elisha restored to life. Which means God restores you. You will show up at the right. I, I man, come on, somebody, shop I will show up. I will show up at the right time. Are there people who believe this prophetic word? You will show up in that company when they are looking for somebody just like you. As you appear, they will say, this is the man. Yeah, this is the woman. Yes, she appeared. And, and, and I say, hey, wait a minute. Let us not even discuss for her. But check the timing of her appearance. Check how God provoked a conversation and the distance where she was. And she appeared when Gehaz was trying to explain her. And as Gehaz was trying to explain her, she showed up. Which means something in her told her that you must move to the king at this time. Because as you approach that place, God is ahead of you. And God is already preparing your landing place. So that when you show up, they will embrace you as if they know you all alone. Ay, 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 ay. Is there somebody say, I'm not going to miss my moment Yeah. I, I want to say to you, you will show up when they need somebody like you. As they are going through the CVs, when they come to yours, they will say, this is... Ah, I want some of people, they will say, this is the person we have been looking for. When the seven years is over, you are not going to struggle. You must be faithful in your family so that you may be fruitful at the end of it. Ah, for weepings and joy for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Ah, I'm about to show up. many people believe that I've been hiding for too long they push me out of my job they push me out of my promotion but it was only for seven years South Africa I seven seven somebody said the seven years is over I want you to be prophetic as you make this confession. The seven years of depression. The seven years. I see people. I want people who agree with me that Pastor Seketi, it's over. I feel in my spirit. You have been locked out for too long. But God says, thank God you never die in your fair mind. Ay, 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 ay. I came back alive. Yes, I'm wounded, but I'm still alive. Yes, I'm broken, but I'm still alive. The devil is a liar. I'm coming back to claim back. Ah, it's all. I'm sent by God to tell you you have been in that place for a certain time God allowed that season for a reason there was a reason for that season God sometimes will take you out as if he is denying you but he wants to develop you out of your comfort because there is no growth in comfort 
You will never develop where you are accepted. You develop where you are rejected. Because rejection will bring that resistance. <laughs> ah, we are dangerous under pressure. We are dangerous when we are rejected. <sighs> Lift up your hand and say, it's over now. I want you to be prophetic because this message is saying to you, you cannot stay outside forever. God has given your pain time. Your problem has been given time. Even poison has an expiry date. You cannot cry forever. You cannot be depressed forever. You cannot be a beggar forever. Something must give in. Yeah, something must move. I'm here to cause a shift in the name of Jesus that you have been crying, but you are about to wipe off your tears because this is the day that the Lord has made. The famine is over. Let us declare it upon our families. The season of famine is over. Somebody say it's over. I don't care how I feel, but the famine is over. Whether I'm waking or I'm not waking, but I hear the Lord say you must rise up. Rise and shine. Oh, Sakaya, the woman is rising. As she approaches, the, 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 he, she became the topic in the higher places. I pray that God will recommend you in your absence. Somebody will speak about you in your absence. Somebody will mention your name in the HR offices. Somebody will mention your name. Ah, you are about to be mentioned as you approach. You are already a topic in the higher places you are already a topic in the higher dimension i'm sent by elohim i here to tell you your seven years is over it's over sir. i'm sent by god yeah! it was painful but it was not permanent Something is coming to an end. I say something that has been happening in your family is coming to an end. That seven years of frustration is coming. I'm sent by God. The seven Breaking the season of famine. Holy Spirit has sent me here to tell you that you have cried, it's enough. You have been wounded, it's enough. But this is the day. Don't, don't be apologetic, arise. Don't look at what happened. Look what is about to happen. I'm about to do something. What the eye has not yet seen. What the EA has not had, 
whatever has never came across the mind of the person those are the things that I have prepared now listen to me you cannot have access to what is prepared unless you are prepared now God will use a season of famine to build a capacity for what you are about to receive this woman thought she was pushed outside but it was not a denial it was a setup no story no glory hey i say no story no glory i am a satalaba and paul says to the romans the sufferings of the present time can never be compared to the glory there is glory after the story Yamaya Satarabaya Taraba Yerabo Shakaya Baba Sabadias is over. Can I hear somebody who say it's over now? I've been crying for many years, but it's over now. I've been broken for many years. But it's over now. I've been blaming people all my life. But it's over now. Hey, I forget what is behind. Can say he peel. Oba how finana. Le morena. Yari sepi si te. Uya sepa ala. Ase moramoto. Ya kabu alishano. Oluka hai. Opa. I hear as a prophet to tell you it's over now. You will smile again. You will have your sleep again. Here's the power. The Bible says when she arrived, the king appointed an officer. I want you to hear something strange. You will read it when you get home. And he said to the officer, restore to her whatever that she has lost. Even the produce that happened in her absence. Somebody shout restoration. Somebody shout restoration. Here, here is my question. If it was seven years of famine, why God says even what her land produced? Which means her land was still producing in famine. Because I don't understand how can they say even what the land has produced in her absence. Oh, which means even if I'm not there, God is still there. Now, which means my land can produce in my absence because it is in, still in the presence of God. Which means sometimes God will take you out so that he may take the work. So, when now you will come after seven years not to work but Can I see people say, thank God for the seven years. It may not be seven years literally, but you know what I'm talking about. You know that seven years that taught you a lesson. You know that season that people who thought they will support you, they pushed you away. You remember people that used to pick up your call and they were no longer picking up your call. It was the season of famine. That season, it's a season of favor. It's over now. God is going to wipe off your tears. Thank God that you are wounded, but you are still alive. Somebody 
as long as I know who I am and to whom I belong. I was asking God a question one time. And I said to him, when you say, whatever the locust has eaten, you shall restore. And I said to God, but now what are you doing with the locust? And God says, no, don't kill the locust. Because I want the locust to be the, uh, to, to be, to be the witness. When I restore you, what has destroyed you must still be alive. So that it may see that if something has God in it, you can push it outside for seven years, but it will come. I'm on Shabbat Mazor, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming. The Bible says, when the outer man is destroyed, then the inner man is renewed. Which means the renewal of the inner is depending on the destruction of the outer. Now which means God has access to both your outer being and your inner being. But sometimes God will keep the devil busy with your outer man while God is busy working in your inner man. Because God is not interested in what you are doing. He's more interested in who you are becoming. And God says, follow me, I will make you. He never said, follow me, I will give you. Ah, yeah, yes. God is not having a problem in giving you. Your hands can be too quick to receive. But do you have the heart to manage? It's easy to get it into your hands, but what is in your head and in your heart determines how long you will keep it in your hand. That is why God is not going to put it first in your hand. He will put it first in your heart and put it first in your head. If you read the book of Joshua, he said to the in chapter 6, I have given Jericho into your hands. But when they get there in chapter 7, it was still covered with walls. And God says, if you want it in your heart, you must go around the walls and seven. When you go around the walls, you are not mad. You are building momentum for blowing. Uh, uh, how many people say that you are not mad? You are not mad. You are not mad. You are not mad. You are not mad. You are You're not mad. You are 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 not mad. You you will blow again and when you blow for the last time it will blow your mind it will blow your mind you will never believe what God is about to do God is powerful when you are vulnerable God is powerful when you think it's not gonna happen he is the God of the impossibilities. He loves you when you are weak. That is why the Bible says, Now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. And if God be for us, who can be against us? We are more than conquerors. Persuaded, convinced that neither death nor life. I see people say it's over. Say it intentionally. It's over. You read the book of John 11. There is a man there by the name of Lazarus. He was sick. And while he was sick, they went to seek for the Lord. 
while he was sick. They said to the Lord, the one you love is sick. And instead of coming, he said, this sickness is not unto death. But it is for the glory of God. If I can come today, they will only know me as a healer. But if I come later, they will know me as a resurrector. Uh, God is not denying you a miracle. He wants to build a bigger testimony. Can you believe, can you agree with me that it's a setup? Come on, lift up your right hand and say, this is a setup. It's a divine setup. When he arrived at Bethany, the Bible says he never went inside. He waited outside. And they came to fetch him and they said, Lord, if you were here, my brother will have not died. They say if you were here while he was still here. Because your pain sometimes can blind you. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, he shall live again. And though Jesus knew where the graveyard are because he's a all no, he said, where have you put him? Show me the grave. And the Bible says, Rata ka sutu bar morena, toho to bon. How many people say, Lord, come and see? Come and see what COVID has done to us. Come and see what relationship has done to me. Come and see what people who claim to love me have done to me. Come and see. Morena, go, come on. Yes. Afitama bite. It was not only Lazarus' grave in the graveyard. Oh, God, help me to preach. There were other graves. But I believe that Jesus was jumping graves, going to the grave. Because if it's your day of resurrection, it doesn't matter how many you are. I man, shop Amazon if it's mine. It's mine. They can gossip, but they will never stop it. If it's mine, but to Babangata, about twelve let's go six years, eleven months. Along good one, good. I can't know for seven years. How only six years, eleven months? We said to go hoidi. Kya ba ngala ba 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 usema. Kanti abatiburi. They were just about to be rewarded in a month time. The time when people leave you sometimes is when your miracle approaches. Amen. But geographically, geographically. The darkness of the night, it's not darker like the darkness of the early hours of the morning. Which means the darkness of 8 o'clock p.m., it's lighter. But the darkness of 2 a.m., it's darker than the one in the evening. And they say when they make a research, it's because when the sun approaches, darkness intensifies. <laughs> When, when, when the sun approaches it becomes dark and when you see darkness the enemy wants you to focus on the darkness but tell the devil when it gets like this I know I am soon and very soon come on how many people say it's coming closer now? You prayed for something. You know, when you read Daniel chapter 10, Daniel prayed and nothing happened. The, the, the Bible says when he was about to give up and he was tired, he saw the man and he touched him and said, Daniel, 
from the first day you prayed, your prayers were heard. Now you must never confuse the prayers that are answered and the prayers that are heard. Because miracle doesn't start when you see the answer. It starts when the God hears the prayer. The greatest tragedy is not an answered prayers. It's an offered prayers. Can I say that again? The greatest tragedy is not an answered prayers. It's an offered prayers. Your duty is not to determine when. You must just give God a prayer. He said to Jeremiah 33 verse 3, Call unto me and I will answer. And I will show you great and hidden things, even things that you know nothing about. And he said in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I alone know the plans and the thoughts that I have for you. Not the plans to harm you, but the plans to prosper you. And in Jeremiah chapter 1, he said, Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I made you a prophet even before you prophesied. It's over. Listen to me. There are times in, in games, Apostle, you'll hear that. Now there were this game was staged. It's like people sit before the game and they determine results you know that there are many cases and say no these players they, they were brown envelopes which means that the results were discussed before the game starts which means there are there is a team that goes in there already won even before they play that is the principle of god god discuss your success and he complete it now, which means you have unfair advantage because you enter the battlefield with the crowd. When people look at you as if you are fighting in God, you have already won. Because God finished it in him and he begins it in you. Now, you are not going forward. You are going backward. You are going back to the future. The whole Bible from Revelation is taking us back to Genesis. In the beginning, God. When you read the book of Revelation chapter 12, it says there was a woman who was about to give birth. And all of a sudden, dragon came. This woman was pregnant for nine months, but there was no dragon. The day she was about to give birth, then the dragon showed up. Now, which means don't look at the dragon as a problem. Look at it as, as a clock. Because once you see the dragon, you must know that what you are carrying has reached maturity. Ah, Shabba Mazora, I'm about to give birth. Why the dragon is watching? And the Bible says the dragon was there, wanted to eat the child. Yeah. Yeah. Not everything that attend your room of birth wants to help you. Some they want to eat. Who is in your labor ward? In 2022, who have you allowed in your labor ward? Visitors cannot enter the labor ward while there is procession. When God is busy with you, visitors must stay outside. When Adam wanted multiplication, God said you cannot be multiplied while you are awake. Now the Bible says he went to a deep sleep. Because God wanted him to be absent when he made it for him. Because there are certain things when God is building them for you, you must not participate. You must rest in God. And God will pull a rib out of you. 
How many people say I'm not dying, I'm multiplying? <laughs> Sometimes God will put you in a separate room. And God pulled the rib out of Adam. And he turned it into Adam's desire. And he brought Eve to Adam. But here's my question. I want you to listen very slow. This is very prophetic. After God gathered the dust, he breathed. But after he pulled the rib, he never breathed. Yeah, hear me. When God put the dust together, he breathed, and the man became a living soul. But when he pulled the rib, he never breathed on Eve. What was Eve breathing? Which means the, the breath or the breath that God put in Adam was not only for him. Was for everything that will come out of which means in you, as you are standing here, there is enough breath for your career, for your business. Which means whatever that comes out of you will come alive because you are connected. Do you agree with me? It's impossible for me who is alive to give birth to something that is dead. God came to Gideon and Gideon was hiding away from the Midianites. Okay. He was busy with the wheat. Okay. Okay. And God came to him and he said, mighty warrior, yeah. God is with you. Because God is not speaking the language of where you are. He's speaking the language of where he's taking you to. He doesn't call you a warrior, even if you are worrying. He call you a warrior. <laughs> when you go to a pie shop, I think there are pie shops here, and pie city and other stuff. There are pepper steaks and, and cornish and what. Most of the time, the name of the pie is not what you see. If you say pepper steak, you are not speaking about what you see. The outside of the pepper steak and steak and kidney can be the same. But what differentiates the pies is what is... I ah! I'm sorry, there is something in me. Come on, somebody say there is something in me that is different from others. What differentiates you is not your clothes. It's not your car. It's what you are carrying in your inside. There is a car here. I showed the apostle that they wanted to attack this car that is carrying money. We call it FG in, in South Africa's Fidelity Card. That is the most ugliest car I've ever seen. But it's the most wanted. Which means they don't care how it looks. They are targeting what is carrying. You are confused why the devil is after you. He's not afraid of you. He's afraid of the treasure that God has deposited inside of you. Your battles, it's a spiritual sauna. Ah, check that man, check that man. Because a soul like can show the gender of the child before the child is born. Now when you see the giant before you, you must know that there is a giant greater in you. David killed the lion and he was not known. He killed the bear and he was not known. But when he killed Goliath, he was known. Because the taller the problem, the higher the impact. I am shepherd my soul after this Goliath. Botswana shall know 
that there is a David in Botswana. I want you to look for five people and just give them an elbow and say it's over. Say it prophetically. It's over. That seven years of struggle. That seven years of depression. Come on, look for five people. Hasna moya mutuel. Ubate bana limo ya mjete ori de I'm announcing the end of a season and I'm introducing the beginning of the season. Apostle, we cannot talk about the new beginning if we don't shut the back door. How many people believe that the door behind me? Ah, yeah, you see what I'm doing. I went to another garage. When I'm far from the door, the door was closed. But when I approach it, it opened on its own accord. Have you seen such doors in garage? It opens. But when you get there, even in banks, there are such doors. When you enter, the door before you is closed. Because the door behind you is still open. But immediately the door behind you closes. Automatically the door before you, it opens. Now I'm here to announce that we are closing the door behind you. And we are opening the door before you. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. The Lord who made the heavens and the earth. How many people say the Lord is shutting the back door? Come on, say it. God is shutting the back door. Your seven years has come to an end. But you are still here. You are still alive. You went through it all. I love wrestling. My, I have boys in my house there. When you watch wrestling, say, it's not like boxing. Oh, you must tell me when the time is up. It's not like what? Boxing. In boxing, when, when you, you, you punch somebody and that person fell, that they stop you. And they do the counting. Eh? Again, in boxing. Have you watched boxing? Yeah. But in wrestling, they don't, they don't stop the person. They allow the opponent to stay on top of you. Huh? This giant will sit on top of you. But even if the giant is on top of you, it doesn't mean you are defeated. The referee must still do the counting. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 Apostle, you see. But what I love about that, when you are up, the referee is up. But when you are down, he goes down. Which means it doesn't matter if I'm down as long as I'm down, but I see the referee. I, I, am I having spiritual people here? I say you may be down, but as long as you see God, it's a matter of when you, he counts, he doesn't concentrate on the giant on top of you, he concentrates on you. And sometimes he understands that the weight is too much, you can't stand. But the rules say, if you can just kick the fight is still on. I want you to prophetically do like this and say, I'm still kicking. Ah, after seven years of pain, I'm still here. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I've lost my money. But I'm still here. I've lost my house. But I'm still here. I've lost my car. But I'm still. Now, whatever happened in seven years, it was not a loss. Because the Bible says the officer was appointed. 
Say, give her back whatever belongs to her. God say, I must tell you, you are about to get it back. I want you to thank God that he's coming back. Whatever the people have stolen from you, Jehovah will restore it. God of restoration is here. Seven years is over. The Bible says when the flood, when the water has subsided, God said to Noah, open the window. Check outside. The storm is over. Do you remember that song that we used to sing? The storm is over now. Do you still remember that song? Can we sing that song in a minute? The storm is over now. And I believe it's over. Worshiping, can you, can you sing for me that song? Are they there or they are praying? Yeah, yeah. The storm is over now. Ribaha swatala baba. It's over now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Karabo satala baba. The seven years is over, my mother. The seven years. Come on, say it prophetically. Storm is over. Let this be your prayer. Let this be your prayer. The storm is over now. In my family, the storm is over now. In my marriage, the storm is over now. In the spirit, there is an end of a season, there is a beginning of a season. It's over. Oh! I want you to celebrate. Can I hear the shout of it? Smile again. You will feed your children again. You will afford your rent again. You will buy your property again. The storm is over. Ah, somebody must believe this way. Five people again and say it's over now. Yeah, move around. Find five people and tell them it's over now. I see the rainbow. I see the sunshine. After the flood. After the storm. It's over now. You can wipe off your tears. It's over now. You will have your peace back. It's over now. You will sleep tonight. I declare as a prophet, you will sleep tonight. The seven years of famine. Storm is over now. 
copa na luva na molo mano puxa trole para o ser essa cara isso copa na luva na o ser em tua house galaxi para o etal o ser em outro assim outro it's a new season the storm is over you will be pushing out wedding invitations about what's our salary the seven years the seven years are you ready to march to a new level I get a go fella bye bye say bye do like this goodbye 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 sleepless nights goodbye depression it's over i'm crossing over joseph saw a dream seven cows that were thin and seven that were healthy and he said this seven symbolizes the years of hunger but it's not going to be hunger forever we are coming out of the season of lack oh somebody must hear this prophetic we have cried it's enough we have lacked it's enough but i hear the lord say is off May the Lord do unto you according to your prayers. In the name of Jesus. May closed doors open before you. May favor become your name. May people call you blessed. Because surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. All the days of your life. You shall not die but you shall live. To declare the goodness of the Lord. Beloved, Apostle, I want us to pray for something very personal here. God says to me now, one of the things that keep us in a fair mind is unforgiveness. Forgiving doesn't mean the other person is right. It only means I want my peace back. Forgiveness is not the loss of memory. I, I forgive you, but I still remember what you have done to me. But I no longer remember as a victim. But I remember as a victor. And you must learn how to forgive even people who are not sorry. How many people say I cannot hold the crush any longer? God deliver me from me. Sometimes it's your pride that tells you no, they must phone me. They must come to me. You are drinking poison, but you are expecting somebody else to die. You are killing yourself. Your destiny is greater than what they have said about you. They have hurt you, but thank God they didn't kill you. When Jesus was wounded, he never waited for healing. He said, Father, forgive them while he was still bleeding. I want people today who say, Lord, I want to release people from my heart. They will keep you in fair mind that has already expired. <laughs> I want you to approach the throne of God today. Everyone who say, Lord, I want to forgive them even if they are not sorry. I see somebody here. There are things that you 
happened to you in your childhood and people who said they will protect you when you lose your parents they played they did contrary and you are bitter you want to revenge and god says speak like joseph you intended it for evil but god intended it for good i want to pray with you i want to pray with you i don't know how but if if you can even come closer to me here if you feel that you have to release somebody it doesn't matter come come stand with me here where can i go can i go this side yeah come come and come and come leave your chair if you feel if you feel if 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 there is nothing in you it's not a problem but if you feel that i have to release somebody just for my peace come i pray with you you cannot live with that crush is going to kill you god say it's becoming a poison it's over now you have complained it's enough you cannot be bitter forever you cannot be angry forever you still have a life to live don't allow your past to kill your future don't allow your yesterday to poison your tomorrow if you feel i'm talking to you come and say lord help me to release for your do it for you you are not doing it for that person you are doing it for you riba hasa talaba haya how many how long will you carry that in your heart it's killing you it's killing you you act alive but you are dying you act happy but you are messed up there is an old wound that is still controlling you ira ba 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 the seven years is over there is a divine operation here close your eyes people who are not in the altar call can you just help me in prayer help me in prayer help me in prayer this is very serious these are things that make people to commit suicide while they are still serving god and laughing but they have wounds behind the clothes wounds behind the houses wounds behind the cars but i hear the lord say it's over now the seven years of famine ya raba ha sata la ba 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 ya ira ba 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 healing rain is falling healing rain is falling i'm not afraid yes i'm not afraid yes yes sing the song the healing rain la ba si ka la ba ya la ba 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 Ya Rabba hamba la ba 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 to pray people who are in the front i want you to pray yes i am
is falling down. Rain and rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm counting one. I'm counting two. I'm counting three. Can you just hold my hand? I believe God when I say three, something divine will come upon you. Let your living waters come over my soul. Let your living waters come. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control. Spirit, Spirit, Holy Spirit, Jesus, Jesus. When I say three, I believe God for a total healing. Some of you, you are sick, you are not aware. Some of the sickness physically is because of the things that you are carrying in your spirit. You are, you are, you are, you are overloaded. <laughs> you are carrying an extra weight. Your heart is heavy. You don't know even how to love again. Because your heart was broken. <laughs> you have even chased away the right things because of your past. <laughs> your wound is dominating your life. You are not hurt by what happened. You are hurt by who did it. You never thought. Or is somebody you trusted so much can do you so bad. But I hear the Lord say you cannot cry forever. You cannot be in pain forever. You must rise above your past. Let your past pass. But two. People who are not in the altar call, I want you to help me. When we say three, I want people thank God for healing. Because somebody who has been haunting you has been released from your heart. When I say three, I want you to thank God. And people body too long, I want you to pray. Help them to push it out. What is killing them? Release them. Release those people. Say of the Lord. It's not in your, in, in your advantage to keep them in your heart. Forgiveness doesn't mean reconciliation. You can say apology accepted, but access still denied. You can forgive them over here, but you must keep them over there. I say forgive them here, but keep them there for the sake of your peace. When I say three, I want you to... But let us help them, help them, because they are pushing something. Three, come on, thank God, people are here, and everyone pray for them. Do not Lord, finally, finally, I'm free. Those who are not in the altar call, pray, pray. Those who can pray in tongues, pray. Those who can pray in the spirit, pray. This is spiritual. Yes, I am. Do it for you. Do it for you. Do it for your future. Do it for your peace. Release them. Release them. I know they are arrogant, but release them. I know they are not sorry. It's a new beginning. The 
the famine is over. The seven years of crying is over. The seven years of depression is over. The seven years of suicidal thoughts. Apostle and my wife, can you can you just put hands on top of them? Yes, you are marching around. I feel anointing here. People in the in chairs, pray, 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 pray for us and pray for them. This is not easy. Some people were hurt so bad. And by people they trusted so much. But to pray with you. Yeah! Be free, be free, be free. Lord, we pray for freedom. I feel the Holy Ghost here. He is our helper. He will help us even to forgive. Help us, Holy Spirit. Heal us. Heal us. Heal us from the wounds that are not known by man. I see people here with unknown wounds. Your friends, they are not aware that you are dying. You smile every day. But deep down, there is something that is haunting you. There is something that is eating you from the inside. When you are alone... There are pictures that are playing in your mind that remind you of the things you went through. <laughs> but if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. The old has passed out and everything has become new. I want people, Basimona, Akore, something new is happening. Declare something new upon them. Say, new beginning is Satalabahanda Rabaha. Something new. How long will you cry for Saul, Samuel? How long? How long? How long? God said to Samuel, How long will you cry for Saul? How long will you blame somebody who didn't marry you? How long? You have stayed in this mountain for too long. Break the camp and move on there is still life after this there is still future after this you are not the first one to be dumped you are not the first one to be disappointed as long as god is with you you are not going down holy spirit the seven years of famine is over Somebody is about to be restored. Whatever your land has produced in your absence, it's coming back. It's over. It's over. I believe what the Lord is saying. The seven years of pain is over. The seven of years of stress, anxiety, overthinking about things you cannot change. It's over. What is before you is greater than what is behind you. 
the future will be greater than your past. After the death of Abel, there is always the birth of Seth. <laughs> the name of Jesus. God is helping us. We are the prisoners of our past. But last thing before I stop this, can I just move back? I hear the Lord say, forgive yourself also. Forgive yourself. Even for the wrong decisions that you have made. Even for the wrong choices that you have made. Forgive yourself. No more condemnation. Forgive yourself. Don't blame yourself for things that you couldn't change. It's your choice to love somebody, but it's that person's choice to love you back. You cannot force anyone to love you. You can just love them. If they don't want to bring that love back, you have done nothing wrong. <sighs> love yourself because God loves you. Your dreams are not dead. Your future is not doomed. You have just learned a lesson. You are better bef than before your mistakes. You are better than before your wrong choices. Holy Spirit, help them to forgive themselves. Forgive you. I say forgive yourself. Don't be too hard on you. You are just human. You were just trying. That adversity became university of life. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you, say Amen. May the Lord keep you, say Amen. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, say amen. May goodness and mercy follow you, say amen. May you be blessed coming in and be blessed going out, say amen. Whatever you touch shall multiply, say amen. May the Lord bless the works of your hands, say amen. Welcome to the new beginning. Thank you. Till we meet again. Bishop to go back to South Africa. 
I want him to pray for the men and the women of God. They are hurting. Please, son, I want you to come. Pamela, come. Pamela, run. Sir, I want you to come. I want you to come. Sir, I want you to come. Uh, come here with your wife. Pastor Andrew, come here with your wife. Pastor Nell, come here, please. Uh, I just feel, I just feel we minister so much to people that even in a moment like this when there's a conference, we don't have that personal moment where the guest speaker ministers to us because we are part of the ministration team. Uh, I looked at you, sir, and the Spirit of the Lord just said to me, he came here to be ministered to. So a bishop will not live until he ministers to you, until he ministers to you. Son, can I have the mic or can I change the, change this? All right. Maggie, please, I want you to come. Broken dream. You are just a broken dream. Scattered.